Another said to him, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first. See, gosh, that's so us. Lord, but. Lord, but. Listen, don't don't just read over that and miss it. Lord, but first. Let me say goodbye to my family. Does that ring a bell? This exact same thing Elisha said to Elijah. He knew the text. This is his way out. Not trying to be probably mean. I think it, probably his heart was probably pure. Let me just go tell my family bye. Lord, but we do this all the time. See, a lot of things you're praying about right now, God's already spoken about. God, I don't want to forgive them. I don't know if I should forgive them. Lord, but. Lord, I know what your word says, but I'm not going to forgive them. They hurt me. She left me. He left me. Took the kids from me. Filed bankruptcy. They let me go. They said this bad thing about me. I'm not going to forgive them. God's already spoken on that. Lord, I know, but I'm not going to do it. And you wonder why you're not experiencing him. When the Bible talks about being generous and bringing back the tithe, what's him? Lord, I know what you say, but I ain't going to do it. You see my budget? You see my paycheck? I can't make it happen. Lord, I know. But do you see this? And we make our own plans and we wonder why we don't experience him. Because we won't make the adjustments. Here's how I know this guy's already been following Jesus. Look what he says next. He says, anyone, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now, hold on. He's not talking about being saved. This is about, you didn't count the cost. Now watch this. He's already been following Jesus. Why? He says, hey, you've already put your hand to the plow. You already know what we're heading in. And anyone puts their hand to the plow, of course, I'm not a farmer. Today, we don't have oxen. So they're called John Deere today. Can I get a witness? You know what I'm saying, right? My new Holland fan. Like, that's, what, that's, a, that's a modern day oxen. Put your hand to the plow. We're heading in the direction that God wants to go. But then all of a sudden, they take their head and they begin to look back of the past, where they used to be, who they used to be, good and bad, success and pain. And they get distracted from the past and look back, but I want to go back. But you've already started the plow. You've already, you've already committed to follow me. You're already in this direction. And you know what happens, right? It's just like you. When you take your eyes off the road, wherever you're looking, you're going to drift that way. And if you don't believe me, if you have a second passenger beside you, they will tell you. If not, the rumble strips will. Get over. And you're plowing one way, but you begin to look back. And Jesus said, when you begin to look back, listen, you're not fit to experience the rule and the power in the purpose and our plan. You can't look back. Once you start this, you better count the cost in following me. Jesus raises the bar. I know Elijah, Elisha to go back. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's not about your plans. Jesus is not being mean, Jesus is not being ruthless. Jesus is letting you know this ain't no easy believism, easy walk that you just think you're going to come to me and life's going to be good. You're never going to get acne again. You're going, you know, you're going to eat Oreos. We're going to have zero calories in it. This ain't, this ain't like you're going to have all this money in your life. No, if that's what you're thinking, this is not what it means to follow me. But if you want to experience me in the midst of trial and pain and suffering and being uncomfortable and stepping out of your comfort zone, if you're willing to follow me when I have a crisis of belief and speak to you and you adjust your life and your ways and your thoughts and your finances and your family and your emotions, if you'll adjust to me, man, I will use you and you experience me in an unbelievable way. Most of us won't make the adjustments. And we wonder why we're not experiencing him greatly. Lord, but.